Hello, this episode of the How to Be an Author podcast is coming out on Valentine's Day. And I thought that this was really appropriate because today I'm taking the opportunity to talk about your relationship, your relationship with writing, that is. The timing could not be more perfect for this. Besides the fact that I'm actually releasing this on Valentine's Day, I've also noticed this funny thing. And I don't know about you, but have you ever noticed how sometimes everyone seems to be kind of stuck in the same phase in life or having some of the same thoughts and feelings and frustrations or being fixated on the same thing? I think I first noticed this phenomenon when I was working in retail. I had a store and I would bring in some fabulous items that I thought would be snapped up instantly. And strangely enough, they would not get any attention at all. And I'd be wondering, what the heck did I misjudge? Is this something that my audience or my clients or my customers are not interested in? Until one day, it would seem like every single person in town, everyone who came through my shop's door, was now looking for exactly that thing. Once, it was this very specific bag. It was a cool leather bag with a kind of a brass ball hanging off of it. Very cool. I thought it was going to sell like hotcakes, and it didn't until it did. And all of a sudden, everyone wanted that bag, and they sold out. Another time, it was vintage champagne buckets, of all things, and nobody wanted them. I thought that was crazy. Who doesn't want a vintage champagne bucket? Until one day, six different customers came up and bought multiple vintage champagne buckets until I had none left. Okay, don't worry. This podcast episode is not all about shopping. The same phenomenon seems to happen in every realm. And in talking to multiple writers, just like you in office hours or in my coaching sessions in the past few days, I've noticed a really interesting trend. And that is that many of you are in a spot where you're deciding and thinking that you need to reevaluate your relationship with writing. Some of you have noticed that you're still committed, but you've kind of fallen out of love. Some of you have fallen into a rut that happens and you're having a hard time getting out of it. Some of you have been noticing that the things that used to work to make you happy or productive or inspired with your writing are no longer working. Some of you have been playing around with writing for a while, you know, dating, if you will, and you're ready to get more serious, but it's been so long that it feels kind of awkward to have that conversation, you know, the one where you figure out the logistics of what does this mean and how does this work? Where are we going? And exactly, some of you are wondering, where is this relationship with writing going? It's been such a long time. There was no commitment, nothing to show for it. And now what's next? You know, are you going to have a little child, i.e. a book? When's that coming? Maybe, though, it's time to dump your old, unhealthy relationship and start a new, fresh, exciting one. And I'm not saying to dump your significant other. I'm talking about starting over with your writing. That feels like a really fun opportunity. And, you know, it's like when you start up a new relationship, you bring the things to the table that you learned in the previous one, but also sometimes you're going to notice that you bring some negative patterns, and that's not the best thing. So if you were to start over, what would you actually actually consciously do differently? What could you do differently? And, you know, what would you bring to the table that actually make you a better writer, even though you're starting completely over? And how would all these things affect your writing and your writing career? So if you're a member of Writing Coach on Demand, I kind of feel like this is something that we should discuss together in our one-on-one office hours session, um, because I think that this is something that is kind of different for each writer, even though there are some things that I've learned along the way, and there are some things that I've observed in other writers just like you. But um, definitely, I would love to chat with you about it. So if you're not a member of Writing Coach on Demand yet, there's still time. Just head over to the website, creativeandwritingcoach.com, and sign up for Writing Coach on Demand where you get to have access to me, your writing coach, every week, plus bonus materials for less than a dollar a day. That's pretty awesome. Um, But even if you don't do that, I think that in this edition of the podcast, this week, this episode, this is something that is so important for us 
to talk about. I'm very proud of this episode because I think you're going to find it really, really useful and inspirational, whether you're actually literally just starting out or whether you're starting over. These things are kind of similar. It's never too late to turn your writing career around, and it's normal to feel kind of stuck and not be seeing the progress, especially when you've been dealing with all the mistakes and the frustrations for a long time, you start to get those negative feelings, and I don't want that. So in today's episode of the How to Be an Author podcast, we're going to be talking about all the different things that you can look at when you are just starting out or just starting over, and that's going to go from writing skills to platform to social media to making goals to keeping yourself accountable to kind of brushing up on all of those business skills so that your writing becomes a writing career to establishing balance between your writing and your life and a bunch of other things in between. This podcast episode is going to be so useful to establish a writing career that you love. So let's get started. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. Hey, I'm so glad you're joining me for the How to Be an Author podcast. I'm your writing coach, Karenna Akavane. It is my passion in life to help writers to level up in their writing career, whether it's through their writing skills or their mindset, or anything like that. I really look at a holistic approach to get each writer to be the best they can be and to hit their personal writing goals. So if you're interested in hiring a writing coach, definitely give me a call. We can chit chat for free for 15 minutes and see how you can reach success with my help. But this podcast is also a fabulous tool to help any writer to level up and feel better about what's going on in their writing life. So definitely make sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and also recommend this podcast to your friends. I think it's really great to lift each other up. And if you've got a friend who's a writer that this could help, it's such a gift for you to help them out. And that's actually one of the first things I want to talk about. If you're just starting out with writing or you're starting over, I think that having, you know, somebody to help you feel accountable, having some support, having a community of writers around you, that's going to be crucial. And I know that when I first started out as a writer, I was pretty solitary about it. And writing is solitary. You do need that alone time. But I was kind of so uber protective of my ideas and what I was writing that I ended up writing in a vacuum. And I think that this is such a typical new writer mistake to be in a vacuum where you start to feel very isolated. You start to feel that you don't quite know what's really going on in the writing world around you. And you start to kind of lose touch and lose track of reality in a way. What's the reality of what it takes to be a professional writer? What's the reality of what it takes to publish? How does my work fit into the rest of the writing world and what's out there? All of these things are really crucial for you to understand and know. And also, just having other writers around teaches you so much. I have learned more from other writers than I've learned from all the research that I've done. And even from going into an absolute, you know, PhD in literature, I've actually learned more from writers, even new ones. So if I can say one thing that I think is the most important for you when you're just starting out or when you're starting over, get the some writing buddies. And also think about having a writing coach because having somebody who can be objective and kind with you is often the thing you need. I know so many writers who are actually stuck in a rut or feeling like the relationship with writing is not healthy because somebody once told them something that hurt their feelings or that hurt their confidence. And they just can't seem to snap themselves out of it because they don't have the objectivity. I really think that each and every writer who has an idea and a dream can 100% publish a fabulous book. It's just a question of working with your strengths and compensating for any weaknesses that you might have. But definitely talking to somebody objective is going to take you so far in doing that. 
But let's rewind and start talking about some of the different steps that I think that are important for you to take if you're just starting over, but also if you are just starting up, which is really wonderful because this is important for you to hear somebody who's a seasoned writer coming at you from the point of view of someone who's not only had the experience, but who's talked to people who've had the experience and who's heard about the regrets that many writers share. I was talking to a lot of writers asking them, you know, is there anything you regret? Is there anything you wish that you'd done earlier in your career? And I'm going to tell you some of the more common things that I heard. So a lot of writers wish that they'd started writing sooner and that they'd actually started taking it more seriously sooner. And the thing is that writers start to feel that they're losing time. And this is a big, big problem because the earlier you start, the more time you have to hone your craft. And once you start to feel like you lost time that you should have been writing this whole time and that now you're at an age where it's kind of too late for you, okay, that's not true that it's too late for you. You can start writing at any time. But I've noticed that writers who have this fear of having lost time, they tend to start to skip steps. And they start to feel that if they're revising their manuscript one more time, they're wasting time and they've already wasted so much time. Or they're feeling like, oh, waiting for a month to have my manuscript professionally edited. I don't have time for that. Okay, I'm here to tell you that you, you know, are running out of time. We all are, but that developing your writing skills and continuing to hone them is not something that you can take a total shortcut on. So you definitely need to take the time. But yeah, if you're in a position where you could start writing seriously more early in life, I say go for it and do that because it is crucial for you to just really keep exploring all the different avenues that are going to make you a good writer and that are going to help your craft and that are going to help you to you know cultivate that voice of yours because that's really, really important. So if you haven't started yet, start now because you don't want that regret later in life. Talking about things that you might want to do earlier, so many writers, I was talking about writing in a vacuum and not getting the support. I would definitely seek feedback earlier. There's so many writers who tell me, I wish I'd gotten feedback earlier because I was writing this stuff that I thought worked and I got really deep into the world of my book and I you know, wrote something that took me years and years to do, come to realize that it's something that has genius inside of it, but there are definitely some massive weaknesses that make it into something that's not as readable as I would want it to be. And so many writers are reluctant to share their work because they're afraid of criticism. But if you don't share your work, you're going to be getting a lot more criticism down the road when it's a little bit too late and you're getting these bad reviews that are more public. Why not get that feedback earlier and start learning from it? The learning process is a lifelong process for all of us in every walk of life, but especially for writers. We're always learning, we're always growing, and we can always be improving, but feedback is a key ingredient for that. And speaking of, a lot of writers regret that they didn't actually study the craft of writing enough. They kind of got excited by an idea, you know, they read a couple books and they thought to themselves, ah, I could do this too. And so they just started writing and they didn't study the craft. So they didn't quite understand the mechanics of character development, plotting, dialogue, all of that stuff. You know what? Writing is an art, but there's also a bit of a science to storytelling and understanding that can really enhance your work. It's like sharpening your pencil, you know, or gathering the right tools. It allows you to do so much more. And many of you don't really know where to look for, you know, more information on the craft of writing. And you assume that you need a master's of fine arts you know, something that's going to take you years and lots of money, but that's not the case. There are lots of places where you can study the craft of writing from listening to podcasts like this one or joining a writing group and getting the feedback or taking a course like my From Idea to Published in Six Months Masterclass, which gives you all of that information that you need about the craft of writing so you can find it all in one place and learn that stuff faster than you thought possible. That's a really, really crucial thing to do and definitely a regret that lots of writers have where they feel like, you know, it's the equivalent of trying to 
paint a masterwork with, you know, brushes that are broken or not working or the wrong kind of brush, the wrong kind of paint, all of a sudden your work doesn't seem as polished and that's because your tools aren't what they should be. So important to know that. Many writers also feel the regret where they didn't have the chance or they didn't give themselves the chance to experiment. This is akin to marrying the first person you date and you think to yourself, okay, this is it. This is what I'm in love with. But really, you didn't have you know, that experience in life. You didn't experiment with different relationships, different types of people, different styles. Same thing goes for writing. A lot of writers who kind of married a genre right away they notice kind of mid-career all of a sudden, they go, oh gosh, you know, I didn't experiment with a different style. And now I realize that I could have developed a more unique voice that actually is more aligned with who I am. And that helps me to be more authentic as a writer. You get that by experimenting, by playing, and by reading a lot of stuff. And that's really, really important. Many writers regret that they didn't read more of a variety of books um, earlier in their career. And it's never too late to do this, but I find that, you know, we get busy in life. And sometimes earlier in life, we have more chances to be reading. And if you feel like you didn't read enough, maybe you didn't read the classics, and maybe you didn't read some genres that you think you wish you could have explored, the great news is that it's never too late. Start building that reading list, your TBR pile, start stacking those books up, and just get to them. There's not really a timing that is official, but I understand that you don't want to waste any more time and that you should be doing that. Another thing that writers really regret once they have not been doing it, they realize that they didn't take enough time to network with other writers or with readers. So there are a bunch of conferences and groups and things like that that is a great way of meeting other writers and talking to them. And you might think, you know, why am I talking to other writers? That's not necessarily my audience. But, you know, other writers you can definitely learn so much from because they're going through some of the same struggles you are. But also maybe they're looking at things from a different angle or maybe they've had an experience that they can tell you about that is really going to turn things around for you. So I think that this is something that you definitely need to keep in mind, that, you know, networking with other writers and talking to them is going to create a community that's going to be such a support for you. Another thing that a lot of writers have said that they regret is that they feel that they produced a lot of mediocre writing and that they should have been spending more time honing their writing so that they could produce less high quality writing. And this is kind of interesting because I think that every writer's journey is very, very unique and that some writers worry about this. And I think that there's something to be said as well for quantity over quality sometimes. I mean, not always. I don't want you to produce something that's horrible, but sometimes I feel that many writers spend 10 years making what they think is the perfect novel, and you never have a perfect novel, right? It doesn't exist. Perfection doesn't exist, but honing your skills exists, and getting better through experience and learning exists, and also knowing that the best way to market a book is to write another book. Having more books out there even if they're not your best work, that can be something that you want to do. But however, I really recommend that if you're going through your body of work and you've put up some real crap and that with time you've figured out that it's absolute crud, don't hesitate to take that stuff down. I have taken books down before because I've learned that, you know, maybe these don't represent who I am, but the good news is they kind of kept me in the search engines and they kept me in people's minds but now it's time to take them down. And that's fine. I think that you should never believe that you've gone too far or that it's too late to turn things around. So crucial. So let's talk about pretending that we're turning things completely around by starting over. Or if you're actually just starting fresh, lucky you, because here are a few steps that I think that you can and should take to get started. Number one is read, 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 read. I think it's so important to be well-read and not only to just stick to a single genre. Many of us find a genre that speaks to us and we start reading just in that genre. And I think that this gets us stuck in a rut. This is what creates the boredom or the one-dimensional writing. I think that you should try to read different styles, different genres, books, articles, essays, blogs, 
Look at all of that writing and see what you can learn from it. I even tell my writers often to watch a lot of things because I feel that storytelling in TV or movies is often really condensed and really well done. And you can see how the structure of the storytelling is, how the characterization is, the pacing, all of that is stuff that you can learn both from reading and watching entertainment. So definitely take the opportunity to do that. That is the foundation of writing. Another thing that you should do if you're just getting started, but also if you're turning this around, start practicing writing regularly. And by practicing, I don't mean write in your novel every single day, which, I mean, that's good. Having a schedule, a writing schedule is really, really important, but I actually want you to practice your writing in a way that feels low pressure. So whether that is journaling or writing short stories or just playing with different writing prompts or experimenting with things like poetry, I think you should set aside some time to play and practice. Even if it's just a few minutes a week, this is going to feed your authentic voice so, so much. And I highly recommend before you get married to a single genre, and even if you're already kind of in a committed relationship with a genre, practice, 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 and see if you can hone that voice a little bit more. I've already talked about the feedback. I think that it is never too early to start seeking feedback. Even if your book's not done, even if you've not done a book, even if you've just got a single short story to your name, sharing this with people who are going to be more constructive and kind at the beginning is going to start to build up your thick skin that you're going to need for when you start to have strangers critiquing your work. I think this is really important because you are not writing for yourself. If you're serious about writing, it does feed your soul. It does make you happy, but you're not writing for yourself. You're writing for a reader. And you need to identify the different things that you're doing or that you could do better to really speak to your ideal reader. And this takes practice. It takes experience. It's really important. So another thing we had talked about, the regrets of authors, definitely I think that studying the craft of writing is crucial. And if you are a newer writer or wanting to turn this around, or you have an idea and you know that you need some more background and information and some kind of nitty gritty things for how to do everything from determining whether your idea is a good one, to making it stronger, to creating a strong plot, to you know going through the whole query process, this is stuff that you cannot invent. You don't, you're not born just knowing how to do this. Somebody needs to teach you. And I would be honored if you would consider taking my course from idea to published in six months because I have poured all of my knowledge and all of my experience into this course. And this is somewhere where you're really going to get all of that stuff without having to Google all over the place or without having to maybe take some advice that you're going to realize is a little bit messed up. This stuff is really objective and catered to helping every writer and is just something that I'm so proud of. So I really hope that you'll at the very least go check it out and see what's in each month of this masterclass because it is so valuable. But remember that writing is a journey. So even though you're just starting up, keep in mind that this journey is going to take you a while. It's not something that you're going to flip a switch and all of a sudden your writing career is established and transformed. No, this is a life that you're starting. This is a lifestyle and this is kind of a lifelong goal. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So let's talk about some of the things that are going to most impact your success in the long term for your writing. Because many times when people are starting out or even they've been going for a while, there's some key things that they have forgotten to address that can really impact their career and not in a good way. So let's talk about some things that people often forget to do that I think that you need to really start addressing from day one. And if you're starting over, pretend it's day one, let's get this done. Okay, number one is establishing a writing routine. It is all too easy for life to take over and you don't write every day and then you start to realize like, A month has gone by or two months. And because you didn't have a routine, because you didn't make that date with yourself, because you didn't kind of pay attention to it and commit to it, your writing never became a habit. And so you are not progressing the way you should. 
That's really important. So I think that establish a routine really early, make it really realistic. And this is one of the tips that I tell writers, many writers who kind of start off and they're in love with it. And actually many of my ADHD writers are like this. You start off and the idea is so excited is the first flush of love. And you're in that absolute hyper-focus flow state where you're like, wow, this is what I want to do. I am so in love with this and I'm doing it every day and I'm maybe working on it more than I should. And then you get burnt out or you fall out of love, or you kind of fall out of that flow state or that hyper-focus state, and you wonder to yourself, wait a second, is this relationship actually what I wanted? Is this actually what's right for me? And that is normal, this happens, but you need to get that spark back, and you can get that spark back by actually devoting time and making dates and being playful. Marketing your writing is the most important thing that you can do to help you to reach an audience and to increase your chances of somebody discovering your book, which that's pretty much success, right? People reading your book and buying your book. And I know how hard it is to market a book. I know how hard won every single sale of your book can be. And until you start building that momentum, it's really, really difficult to sell even one book to somebody that you don't know, let alone somebody that you do know. But it's something that really takes repetition. It's something that takes strategy. It's something that takes you coming at it from every single angle. And so many new writers that I talk to are like, you know, I don't need to market my work because I'm going to publish conventionally and they're going to market it for me. That's not true. That's not true at all. First of all, you have much stronger chances of being published conventionally if an agent or a publisher sees that you already have an established platform that people are interacting with, that people are engaging with, that it's something that people speak to. You're also going to have much more chances of success and of being taken on if these people see that you care about your career and that you're actually taking the steps to build it and that you're professional and that you understand what it takes to be successful. Because many publishing companies do not have the budget to push your book. You need to be doing a lot of the work as well. So keep in mind that if you don't have an online presence, like I get it as a personal person. I get it if you don't want to be on Facebook. I understand if you don't have time for Instagram and that you don't want to share your personal life, but this is not your personal life. This is your writing life. When you become a writer, you become a public figure. You do not have the choice to hide in the shadows and you can hide behind a pen name, but guess what? That pen name needs to have an online presence. And there are ways of doing this, and I have done this, but it takes so much work. And I think that this is something that you really need to be realistic about and start doing. And we're going to be talking more about the things that I would do if I was just starting over, um, because I wish I'd done it 10 years ago. I didn't do it enough. So please let this be a cautionary tale for you. Your social media profiles, your author website, you know, all those things. If I had started 10 years ago, 20 years ago, man, where would I be today? It would be so, so cool and useful. Like, I wish I'd started TikTok when TikTok started. I wish that I had started building an Instagram for my writing, for myself as a writer from day one. I wish that I'd done Pinterest from day one as a writer. So when you start building that foundation and you start being strategic about it, that's when the magic happens. So let's pretend that we were starting over in social media. And I've had some episodes about starting over in social media. And if you haven't listened to that episode, I would definitely head back to season one to listen to it because it is super useful. But let me just say that if I were to start over or if I were starting out, I would probably do things that are more streamlined and intentional and that actually have a purpose and a call to action. So what I would do is that I would make sure that I'm doing blog posts and videos and being on YouTube and being on Instagram and Facebook page and Pinterest probably. And I would probably post less, but more regularly, more highly branded, with a strong call to action that's telling my audience what I want them to do and how I want them to interact with my content. And so for those of you who are kind of on my different social medias, keep watching because I'm going to try to start to 
focus everything a little bit more. In fact, I think I'm going to start a writing Pinterest and I'm going to do an episode about this soon. But this is something where I think that there are intentional ways of doing this that are so much more effective than just posting random stuff and hoping that it's going to stick because that doesn't work. If you are thinking about from idea to published in six months, the course, I have some great strategy for your social media. I promise you it's going to revolutionize the way that you think about your author platform. And I give you the tasks that you're supposed to do month after month, because if you don't market and if you don't keep marketing, that book is not going to sell itself. So keep that in mind. Now, finally, there's another thing about, you know, protecting your work. A lot of authors and writers, especially new writers, worry about their work being stolen and they worry about copyright and all of that. Um, I wouldn't worry so much about that. Just make sure that you understand how those things work so that you don't focus on the wrong thing. And I would also really stress that you receive proper credit and proper compensation for any writing that you put out there. So many of you are joining these contests that I think are scams. Some contests are awesome though. So if you look at a contest in order to get your name out there, make sure that there's a good chance of you getting some kind of compensation or some kind of credit. Like start balancing what you're doing with what the payoff is. I don't want you to be working super hard in every direction for free and not seeing the financial results and not feeling that your writing has value. So I made the mistake when I was a younger writer, I was working in magazines for a really long time. And I was getting very poorly compensated for my articles because I kind of had this feeling of like, oh, well, I'm so lucky to be publishing in this magazine. Um, I would really take anything. And you're getting paid pennies on the word. And that ends up being kind of frustrating and it ends up with you feeling that you didn't get the proper credit and that your writing maybe isn't worth all that. And so I think it's time to really build a proper relationship with yourself vis-a-vis your worth and your value so that you can see, okay, how can I kind of present myself as a more high worth writer? That's really important and it's something to think about and it doesn't happen overnight. And we'll be talking more about this on the podcast, of course, but I think that it's really crucial to, you know, have this healthy respect for the work that you're doing, the time that you're spending, because again, writing and a writing life and a writing career is about balance. So how much time are you spending on this writing? How much effort and how's it paying off? How can you make it pay off better? How can you make your writer's platform pay off better? with less time spent, just a more concerted effort. You know, you can do things like batching your work or having a schedule or, you know, being super strategic about those things is going to help to create a balance in your writing life. Because one of the things that I regret I didn't do is that I didn't respect myself enough to balance my writing and my work with self-care. Writing's really demanding. You need to keep feeding your soul. And so many writers forget to balance their writing with self-care. That means breaks. That means physical activity. That means social time. That means not dropping your family like a hot potato. That means reevaluating often and seeing if it's working for you, if this balance is correct, if you are really getting the things out of this writing career that you want to. Because this is not about you suffering. This is about you making writing a really positive part of your life, but also having it pay off for you and having your goals be met and making it enriching instead of something that tortures you. And I know you love it, and I know that sometimes we're in an unhealthy relationship with somebody that we love, but make it healthy. With writing, you have the opportunity to do that. And I hope that this episode really helped you to see the possibilities of how to kind of relaunch or launch a writing career in a way that's really helpful and exciting and healthy, and that's just gonna get you to your goals faster than you thought possible. If you have any pressing writing related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com.